Hey folks, this is Gabriel with WilsonLive.com in the beautiful downtown Las Olas for the 29th annual art festival presented by Howard Allen's events. Over the last three decades, this art festival has become nationally recognized as a premier art event in South Florida. This show features over 150 individual artists proudly presenting their work. We're going to visit with some of the exhibitors and bring you Abby's interviews with the festival creators. Now, let's check out some amazing art and thank you for joining us. Hi everyone, I'm Kat Clausen. I'm an artist and I'm from Dwight, Illinois, which is 80 miles southwest of Chicago. What's uh, the description of your style of art? Well, I call it ribbons of color. So I take a, a, an image of a popular personality like Lincoln and I turn it into a colorized version. And I always start with the eyes first, in fact the pupils, and then from there I work outward. Hi, my name is Stephen Penafiel. I am an oil painter from West Palm Beach. I do large scale oil on canvas and my style is sort of an art deco and I call it melodic deco. And the reason I call it that is because it's it sort of derived from um, the, the art deco movement and then I call it melodic because it's based on musical theater. Hi, I'm Doug Fountain. I'm known for my Native American artwork that I do. But you see like this, I live here in Fort Lauderdale and in Colorado. All the feathers that you see in my pieces are fallen feathers. They're from the bird aviary, so no bird is harmed. They're all recycled pieces from the fallen feathers. I work with a gourd, and then everything I do is all a Venetian plaster over recycled drive it, which is a construction material. So I've been doing it full time for 22 years. Hi, my name is Pavlina. I'm from Bulgaria, and I moved to Miami 10 years ago and I make acrylic paintings on linen. I do my paintings uh, based on photographs, but they're not exact representation of the photographs. I uh, do a lot of underwater uh, pictures and then I paint everything by hand. This particular piece is called Catharsis because it just reminds me of the cleansing that uh, water you know, gives you. When you swim, you just feel like cleansed. Hi, my name is Roy Rodriguez and I work with acrylic paintings. Uh, I'm original from Cuba. I lived in Miami for a long, long, long time. <laughs> Please describe us this piece because it's really interesting to see the gold color and something like leaves. Uh, I did a painting back with gold leaf and I have another one that is coming up that is also going to be with gold leaf. But in this particular one, I wanted to use the, the paint, the acrylic paint, the ink, the dripping that I use. I like the dripping. That's another story, uh, but then the gold leaf, uh, when, when, when the sun or the light hits it, it really, really pops, it, it lights up, it's really, really, uh, uh, like she's, she's alive, it's very shiny, she, so yeah, it's, it's a different technique. Hi everybody, this artist here is Sip Soon Ng, he is Chinese, he goes by Soon, his middle name, he's originally from Indonesia, he's a mixed media artist, he's been doing this for many, many years notably here in South Florida for uh, the past 10 years. But 2011, I tried with a new, with a pencil, and a lot of people love it. After then, from there, I developed with a different style of the hair, of the layer kind of stuff. My name is Sidney Carter from Atlanta, Georgia, and my medium is acrylic paints. Uh, I use uh, acrylic paints. Uh, underneath, I build a lot of texture because acrylic doesn't give you texture, so I build my own. So it's kind of like sculpting first and then painting uh, over it. Uh, building the texture uh, makes uh, the painting looks almost 3D. So, you know, I, I build it up first, um, and then once I finish building the, the texture, I paint over it, and, and then I start adding d different details. The texture gives you uh, depth, you know, like I said, and, and it gives it like a 3D effect. I'm, my name is Michael Vistia, and uh, I'm an artist here in Sarasota, over here in Fort Lauderdale today. And um, my medium is oil on canvas, accented with automotive metal flake. Well, first I get the emotionality of the breed, you know, that's the most important. You know, each breed has a specific way about them. And uh, so I kind of tune into that. I guess that's kind of a, uh, 
Uh, kind of a mental aspect, more of a psychic thing. You're just getting into that breed, that's first. You could consider this maybe uh, the initial sketch of a realistic version, but then adding the, the colors, you know. Hi, my name is Sue Chang. I'm from Chicagoland area, uh, particularly in Downers Grove. Um, I work in the medium of acrylic painting on canvas with paintbrush and palette knife as well. Um, I've been doing this show on and off for about 15 years. Please describe us your technique that you use in your piece of art. So, you know, I do acrylic and, and painting on canvas as well as I do a lot of oil pastels on paper. Oil pastels are like a softer version of a crayon. So what I do is I melt it down just like an oil painting and then um, melt it down with the turpentine and paint it onto the watercolor paper with Q-tip and paintbrush. So something I learned 30 plus years ago in high school. I had a really good high school teacher and it's still one of my favorite mediums I use. You gotta really know the medium and you just have to be in control of it versus the medium in control of you and then you can really mess it up. We do this show three times a year and there's a reason we do it. And it's every year it just gets bigger and bigger and we love it. We just love coming in. We have Dan Schaefer here sitting with us ready to talk with us a little bit about his responsibilities as director of Howard Allen Events. Thank you so much for being here. Good to here. be here, it's a fun. Howard and Debbie have done a great job in, in, in building this up over the years, and when you have two to 300 artists, you've gotta have a system. You've gotta be able to put it together. I mean, here we are in Las Olas tonight, and we will start having people arriving anytime after midnight, putting their show, everything on the side of the street, and then at five o'clock we'll let them know, hey, it's time to put it up, and Tent City goes up in a matter of the next two hours. But we have fun, you know, to the best of our ability to, to make the show run as smooth. The artists come to us, we're providing a service to the artists. Okay, and so we want to make sure that we give them the best opportunity to sell their work and to, dem to display their work. I live in Winter Park, Florida. My name is Colleen Artiman, and my medium is usually oil. Who or what inspires you in your artwork? You know, as an artist, everything I truly inspires me. I want to paint the things I see, and so I do things in a series of, um, sometimes a series of 58, series of 7, 8, and to study something. So like behind us, we have um, citrus. I did many of this series, or I've done figurative studies. So just um, to learn something to progress and make it more beautiful. Hello, I'm Enrique uh, Sendra. I'm originally from Cuba, and I now live in Miami, and I'm a surrealist. The inspiration behind uh, this piece, which is titled Cross-Pollinated Signals, it's two brothers on a collision course, and one of them is a builder, and the other one, it's a wasteful character. So he's being blinded, blinded by, his, by the smoke that he's burning in his wheelbarrow, and he, he cannot see his, even his own brother going in, in the same path, and, but he can see him, so he will, he will be able to avoid the collision. So that's basically the, the main idea behind it. Well, for one thing, I'm from New York, so I, I, growing up I saw the large um, buildings and then um, just going to see a lot of theater and, and so watching all the people um, singing and dancing and it just pours out in my artwork. Um, I call it Skyline Passion. Um, it's actually, um, th the name came while I was listening to a Blondie song, if anybody's familiar with music by Blondie, here's a lyric that says Skyline Passion. And so as I was painting it, I just thought it fit perfectly for the art. And, and the colors and the, and, and the vibrancy of it is just what I really love about it. It's probably my favorite of my newer paintings. Hi, my name is Nick Roman, and I'm an artist that works with um, glass, blown glass and metal, and it would be stainless or aluminum. Everything I do is one of a kind. I don't use any molds. Everything is one of one and I actually take blown glass and I combine it with metal, which I think is a very unique marriage. I think um, it's something very different and it's very whimsical, obviously, as you can see. Everything I do brings a smile to your face. Also, I'm noticing that all your pieces has a small heart. Obviously, you do it with love. I do it with love and it gives them soul. You know, the heart represents life and it gives them that soul and, and, and life that they deserve. Ever since I moved to Florida, my art became all about uh, water and swimmers, but I've always been into painting uh, figures. And uh, Michelangelo's work inspires uh, these paintings because he makes the most beautiful male figures. And even though my paintings are pop art and modern, um, the original inspiration comes from his work. I can notice that the majority of her pieces are women yeah. and they have like a hard lips. What does that mean to well, you? Well, women, we all come from women. You know, it's nothing more beautiful in life than your mom, you know? Right. Uh, so to me, that's 
that's that's very nice and 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 the women's is something something you know beautiful yeah. my main thing with the women's is is what is on the head you know because i put everything all the energy here in the, on the headdress because it's, it's it's what i see i i really go into people's i mean trying to think what what the woman is thinking you know in your hearts means life, it means energy, it means everything, and not, nothing more beautiful than putting in into a woman's face. Who or what basically inspires your art? Um, that's a good question. Um, I, I think anything that has humor in it, I think it's very important. I think everybody needs a smile on their face nowadays especially. So I try to go with something that's very bright and obviously that has some humor in it. What you're seeing here now is the culmination of six years of evolution of pencil sculptures. It happened about six years ago, right? You had a, um, somebody, you did, you did a, um, <clears throat> an art in pencils for somebody and it took off and they just loved it. It was the happy mistake. And an interesting thing to see, young kids and older people will come up and they'll approach the art with their hand out and they interact with it, which is cool. I mean, there's a lot of art that you can look at and you can see and your interaction is limited to your emotional limit. You can physically interact with this art. Hi, Julie, welcome. Thank you so much for sharing a moment with us to talk to us about your beautiful art behind me. Thank you, Abby, thank you for having me. Can you tell me a little bit about this piece? So this is watercolor and ink, and I work on canvas, and my work is very simple and minimal but I think it has a good feeling about it. I love nature, so a lot, I do a lot of uh, flowers and trees, and you can see that my style has kind of an Asian feel to it. Absolutely, is that, do you use the nature as your inspiration for most of your art? Absolutely, that, that is always the starting point. So this is, you know, a mangrove tree. Oh, and, but, and the name of this piece? Uh, mangrove a go-go. I love that, <laughs> I love that, that's so fun. Well, it does look like it's dancing, doesn't it? It's it a, does. It's a very active piece. What makes Howard Alley events special for you? I think the people. They, Howard and Debbie are able to draw in fantastic people, buyers, um, year after year, people come here looking for great art. Uh, it's something that I hadn't heard of uh, until I uh, met with Howard Allen, and, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful venue and I think the best in the country, and uh, it's something that um, we love to do. You know, I'm here at Las Olas. This is my second time. Normally I'm in galleries and painting for Opera Orlando up in um, Orlando, Florida. A lot of us here know each other, so there's a, there's a community here. And we, we pretty much, you know, go follow Howard Allen shows all over the country. Howard Allen been good to me. Uh, I've been uh, with them for about 12 years now, and uh, it's, uh, it's yeah, you know, steady, uh, making good money, and uh, putting my kids through college, and so it's been wonderful. Yeah. You know. If it wasn't for Howard Allen events, probably I wouldn't be here, because that was one of my first events when I decided to do these. And he 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 let people that are starting artists give the opportunity to showcase their art, to to put their arts, you know, on the streets, and you can see. That, that motion between arts and, and people. And this event was one of the very first events that we did eight years ago, but we've now, as they've been growing, been very fortunate to grow with them. When I'm in an art show like this and I walk up and down the, the streets and I look at all of these different artists and their, their creative visions and everyone is so different and so unique, it's mind-blowing. So I've been on magazine covers, I've um, been on book covers. I recently did a piece of art and a poem for Yoko Ono in, that was presented to her uh, in Chicago, October 17th. So yeah, art and these Howard Allen events have opened a lot of doors. We are very pleased to be joined here today at the legendary Riverside Hotel in Las Olas with the founder and CEO of Howard Allen Events, Mr. Howard Allen. Good afternoon, and thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. Sure, thanks for having us. Absolutely. When we started Las Olas Boulevard, by the way, this is our 84th show on Las Olas Boulevard. Amazing, 84th show. Three a year for the last 29 years. We started, it was a sidewalk show with 10 artists up on the sidewalk. One Saturday and Sunday a month, all year round. And from that, we grew this show. It's like a Ripley's Believe It or Not, there'll be 275 artists here Picture 275 galleries lined up next to each other. These are artists, right. so their creative lobe works better than their business lobe. Absolutely. So basically, we have to make business people out of them. We help them with display, 
uh, social media, merchandising, and it's important because the better the display, the more aesthetic quality of the display, more amenable people are to buying the work. It's been an incredible journey and we've helped a lot of artists. We've got former doctors, lawyers, college professors, bums, artists, you name it, who gave up their nine to five structured job right. to do their passion, their art, and they've never been happier. They grew their hair a little longer, they put Birkenstocks on, and they're driving a motor home instead of a BMW now. And they're loving it. And they're loving it. I, um, I grew up in a household filled with art. My grandmother was a fine artist, and so I was always surrounded by amazing contemporary works. But um, I never thought that that was going to be my path. I was following a more academic path. On my mom's side, my great-great-grandfather's sitting bull, so I take elements from my heritage. When you see my work, every dot you see represents a prayer of thankfulness whether I paint that or choose feathers that have the dots. The triangle represents unity, the rectangle family, and the circle of the mouth happiness. In third grade, I saw a movie called Face of Lincoln, and you can still watch it on YouTube. Sculptor Merle Gage creates a bust of Lincoln in clay and tells his life story and then ages him in the clay by gouging out the cheeks and, and receding the hairline. And art and Lincoln, you know, for me just came together and I went home from that point and carved my own Lincoln and, and just fell in love with the personality. Uh, I've been an artist since I was little, since I remember for a long, long time. But you know how it is, we have to work. And my career has been banking. I was in banking for 13 years. And then back when everything went wrong with banking, I, uh, I got laid off. And I said, you know what, I'm not going to go back to banking, so I'm going to do what I really like. Um, I'm really honored and just want to do a shout out for the amazing families and the survivors, the first responders, all what you did in Orlando. I'm from the Orlando area and I've been so honored and commissioned to paint a 100 foot traveling mural. It's floating on top of that whole entire background will be the portraits of all 49 people that died. And so it will actually be um, on four foot by 10 foot panels. 25 of them and then as it stays in Orlando for a year it will travel Florida and the United States so people can see a true beautiful response of love and restoration and light from a whole Orlando community and the United States of America. And I thank out to Wilton Live. Wonderful. Thank you for coming in. Hey, keep it up. Love art.